What's up guys, uh, Philippe here again and today we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into the business side of being a freelance artist. Uh, I've got a couple of notes here in front of me and uh, so hopefully uh, this video will be uh, a little less meandering and uh, a little more to the point. Okay, so let's get started. So one thing that you should know is that uh, obviously, uh, working full-time as a freelancer uh, is very scary and there's just no way of getting around that. Uh, the first couple of months or maybe the first year or first, first two years will uh, be kind of scarce uh, work-wise and it's just the way it is because you, you are still building your networks and you, you are still uh, figuring out... Uh, where where's the best place to get jobs and stuff like that so um, the beginning will obviously be a little harder but that's just the way it is for me uh, I was lucky enough that uh, I was uh, still uh, working on my job uh, when I started and of course I uh, that didn't leave me enough time to fully go into freelance but uh, I, I got the chance to build uh, a little bit of a network and to uh, figure out uh, the different places um, and actually make some mistakes right to to learn a little bit before I actually uh, went fully into being a freelancer so maybe that's what you should do but again it, that's a, a very personal thing maybe it maybe it will happen differently to you uh but that's just how it happened to me so that's the only thing i can talk about another very important thing is that you need to treat it uh at least as a 9 to 5 job uh, like what i mean by that is you need to put uh at those daily 8 hours and uh you know, you need to work at it, uh, and you really need to work at it. Like, even if you, for example, in the beginning, uh, don't have enough commissions to fill those eight daily hours, uh, use the remaining time to do lighting studies or try doing some backgrounds, trying doing stuff you like, you know, try... Uh, uh, making cool stuff for your portfolio you know there's there's a ton of stuff that you can do and believe me once you start building your networks and uh, figuring out how things work uh, those eight hours a day will not be enough <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned that on the previous video but I currently work about uh, nine to ten hours a day um, which is fine by me because I, I, I love it, but um, it's uh, like you have to put in the time. That's very important. You cannot take it lightly, you know what I mean? I'm surely uh, working much more now that I'm a freelance than when I used to be a teacher, for example. You know, when I... So, yeah. I hopefully don't have to tell you that uh, when contacting a client you have to be very polite and uh, work on your uh, you know your language and your uh, your ability to create personal relationships and stuff it's just a basic uh, human interaction but uh, Something that I see a lot of artists doing is, you know, uh, when you are a freelancer, you send a lot of emails every day. Um, like, I probably spend one to two of the hours that I work all just for uh, answering and sending emails. And that's because this is how the business works nowadays, you know. So you, you need to... to develop this ability of uh, being professional and being polite and being pleasant, you know, and, and actually being succinct, being uh, 
uh, <laughs> not meandering like I am right now in your emails. Uh, at least uh, I promise you that in my emails I'm better than this. But um, okay, uh, something that I see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of artists do uh, probably because they want to save all of this time, you know. It's just uh, they have a, 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 an email template ready, probably on a uh, text file or something, and they just copy paste uh, uh, and they just change the name of the project or some keywords. You know what I mean? Especially if you if you have a, a DeviantArt profile and you respond to the job offers forum. You will see a lot of prepackaged answers, and that is just uh, that's kind of uh, like it, it takes fifty percent of your chances of getting that job. Actually, uh, I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. Uh, the The most important thing is your portfolio and how it looks and if it fits what the client wants. But it's very noticeable when you uh, didn't when you don't write every email, you know. Uh, it's very noticeable by anyone when you are just copying and paste a template, and <clears throat> this can really make a difference when uh, you know comparing yourself to another artist. Um, I have noticed that um, politeness and actually caring. Uh, a little bit about the project you are like you're opening yourself to to get into this very basic kind of just interaction and politeness stuff this is actually very lacking when it comes to the freelance artist community which is kind of odd but um I definitely noticed that uh, being polite and, and uh, you know, being respectful and being professional and uh, getting to the point, you know, and not bragging about myself. Uh, these kind of things, uh, uh, those kind kinds of things, they kind of put me ahead of other artists and I like I had like I had clients uh, <clears throat> uh, making comments um, like um, wow you are the actual first person I'm, I'm talking to or uh, it, it's nice to be talking to someone polite and and pleasant for a change which is uh, very surprising actually because you know if you if you want to get the job and if you I don't know it's just so basic but it, it seems to be kind of lacking uh, in a lot of artists so be sure to not be that person okay uh, if you are a nerd like me you probably play or have or have played uh, World of Warcraft uh, <laughs> but I'm mentioning this because uh, I wanted to kind of make an analogy to RPGs or especially WoW like uh, to, to the freelance work which is um, it's kind of like le kind of like leveling up in WoW uh, like in the sense that the more uh, the more jobs you you get and the better your portfolio gets uh, and like first you you have nothing right in world of warcraft and in any rpg everyone starts with nothing but you gradually start getting better and uh, getting uh, um, higher level quests and then you are invited to join a guild and then you start doing higher level raids you know what i mean uh it's a very gradual thing so uh don't uh don't be scared when the first couple of months go by and you do like one commission a month and you start thinking jesus uh, <laughs> was it really worth it it is worth it but it certainly can take a while so just hang in there you should always think uh, 
about your portfolio as your resume so uh, your strongest tool to get art uh, jobs is your portfolio uh, don't fill your portfolio with unnecessary stuff it's definitely best to to have just a few pieces but your best pieces right um, seriously your portfolio shouldn't have more than I don't know 20 or 30 images uh, I, uh, I guess 30 is kind of pushing it but because when a client is looking at, at your portfolio they very quickly in two or three images they get a sense of um, what you're good at and what you're not good at uh, especially like <laughs> At least when I look at other artists' portfolios, if the artist posts something that clearly isn't his best work, um, the first thing I think is, okay, uh, this guy is kind of, he, he's uh, f just filling up space, right? Uh, so it's better to have very few pieces uh, but your best pieces then just try to get more stuff and of course in the beginning you will have probably almost nothing to put on your portfolio uh, because you still uh, you probably still ha don't have a lot of experience doing freelance so uh, for example that happened to me and what I did is I just I, I I did some personal projects. For example, um, I thought of doing a, a character reference sheet on all the classic RPG classes, you know, like warrior and priest. And I think uh, oh, I think uh, I did races too. I did uh, I did a high elf and an orc. If I remember correctly, but you know, just if you don't have a lot of stuff to put to put on your portfolio, uh, and you think you need more pieces, choose something that you like and do it. You know, especially because, as I said in the previous video, <clears throat> if something, if you are good at doing a particular thing, like characters or backgrounds or whatever, uh, it should be on your portfolio, right? Uh, but also try not to fill it up with too much, too much, too much stuff. Jesus, uh, don't fill it up with too much stuff. Um, be succinct. Uh, put only only the essential on your portfolio, and put your best. This is probably the main thing that people ask me, which is how much should I charge. Right. Uh, first of all, you you can take a look at what other artists are charging, and uh, I think I contacted some, and I I just like sent him a note on DeviantArt and asked uh, how much they they charge, and I explained that I was a, a, a I was starting as a freelance artist, and uh, I didn't get any. Uh, <laughs> No one was un unpolite to me. Um, the worst thing that happened is people didn't respond. But don't be afraid to do that. But uh, something that uh, it's kind of a formula, but uh, that should help you um, get into a fair and uh, fair for both parties, right? A fair uh, price for you is the following. Um, first of all, figure out how much time it takes you to do stuff, right? How much time does it take me to do a full-colored character? How much time does it take me to do um, in, an environmental concept piece? How much time does it take me to make a storyboard, you know? Uh, how much time does it take me to... Um, uh, to design a, a spaceship, right? Uh, figure out how much time it takes you and Google how much is your hourly rate, uh, like how much is the minimum wage in your country in hours, and and there, then you have your rates. Um, never charge less than that. 
and actually you shouldn't really charge that <laughs> exactly that but uh, you should never undercharge uh, like okay you so you have the the time and you have the how much an hour would cost if you were working minimum wage so there you have it um, I think let me think I, I, I think most artists okay I, I need to do a little a little bit of math uh, in my head here but I, I think most artists uh, like in the US or Canada they charge like um, probably like three or four times um, the minimum wage but of course that'll greatly depend on how uh, how much time it takes them to to do a piece but it, it, it doesn't vary all that much but like if you undercharge um, you drive the whole price of freelance art down you know even if the client doesn't choose you um he he now he has uh, an argument you know he can come out to the artist and say okay your art is really good and i i want to i want to commission you but come on this other guy here he charges much less i think you are overcharging you know uh, which he, which is not true necessarily and uh, clients will <laughs> Uh, try to get the the lowest price they can they can get. It's just human nature, and, and honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, like, if you think you should undercharge because it it might get you ahead, um, like uh, it might give you an an advantage uh, over other artists it most likely will not because when you think about it um, if the client likes another artist better than you he, he will not will not choose an, an artist he doesn't really like just because uh, he charges less you know uh, it doesn't really work for you the only thing it does is give the client leverage to try to lower the price with the artist he really likes oh and of course if the the if the client likes you and likes your art a lot he will not uh, hesitate to pay more you know because uh, at the end of the day it's about it's about the content you know Something else that it's uh, it's incredibly important is that you should always have a contract. Nowadays, with the internet and everything, uh, there's no excuse not to have a contract. Like, there are some situations where I don't use a contract, like when it's v a very personal thing, like uh, someone wants to, wants me to draw them as their uh, I don't know uh, League of Legends character. Or they they want a drawing of their girl, girlfriend or something like that. It's it's not uh, really necessary, but I kind of I still prefer to do that. But even when I don't use a contract, I always uh, d divide the payment. Something that I think works best for both parties is dividing payment in uh, twenty or thirty percent upfront and the rest after you finish the piece because let's say the client uh, never pays you the rest at, at least you didn't work for free and let's say uh, from the other side that the artist really uh, that the artist doesn't deliver you know at least the client only paid a, a, a small amount of the money, you know. So uh, obviously it's not perfect, but it's something that somewhat protects both parties. Um, so that's how I usually do payment. Uh, I'll add the link in the des description below. And, uh, but you can go to Art Pact and they have a lot of different templates for artwork artwork contracts 
um, and they are all very simple and very easy to understand and very short and uh, honestly even if your client uh, doesn't want to go to the trouble uh, of uh, printing the contract uh, signing it and scanning it again there's a lot of online signing services that you can use um, I can't really remember the name of any right now but uh, uh, I'll be sure to add it in the description below so uh, nowadays there's just no excuse not to have a contract you know uh, so really always have a contract uh, have one ready uh, have a template ready like when you first contact the client and he says ah, i really like your art uh, how how much do you charge how do you work tell them very early okay if you don't have a contract i can provide you with one and that's really really important okay now uh, i just want to talk about some random things that don't really impact your work as much as the things i talked about before but they they are still pretty important i i feel like they're very important so for example uh, always be reasonable with your with your prices right and what i mean by that is if there is a, a ton of work you know if there's a huge amount of work it's it's okay to charge a little less like for example whenever i have like a, a, a trading card game project uh, that requires a lot of art you know sometimes they they need 150 pieces of illustration um, I negotiate the price with the client and uh, oftentimes I, I charge less than my usual rates but that's okay because you should always um, focus uh, on the long-term projects you know it's better to charge a little less but have a long-term business relationship than charge more than you usually have but only for a single illustration you know because at the end of the day, uh, those long-term projects will be your main source of income. Uh, it's just how it is, you know. Um, so focus on things that are long-term. And if there's a ton of work, uh, don't be afraid to lower your price, you know. Uh, it's, it's very much okay. Um, never do free samples. Never, really, don't ever do free samples. Um, or what's I've I've been I've seen it being called like spec work, right? But uh, never do free samples. No respectable company, or even if it's an indie company, uh, no respectable company will ask you for a free sample. There there are a lot of companies that do paid tests. You know, they pay you a small amount and you do a, a sketch for them or something like that, which is totally okay. But your resume is your portfolio, right? Um, if the if the client tells you, ah, but I don't know if you're the right guy for the project, I don't know about your style, that's what your portfolio is for. Your portfolio should be enough uh, uh, for the client to decide <clears throat> if you are the, the right pick for the project or not. Uh, and there's just no excuse. And uh, I tell you this because I've been, uh, <laughs> uh, I have done free art and free samples in the past, and every single time it it was a scam. I mean, <laughs> I didn't do it like ten times, but I can remember at least uh, twice. <laughs> so uh, shame on me, right? Yeah, uh, but I can remember two separate occasions where I, uh, I I did free samples and of course I've never heard back from the client and uh, you know uh, maybe I, I was thick cold but whatever uh, I learned <laughs> so don't do that uh, don't do free samples um, uh, no serious company will ever ask you for free samples you know because it's your time you know would you for example um go go to a dentist and uh, okay but i don't i don't know if you are the, the right guy for my teeth or <laughs> whatever can you like oh my god what do dentists do 
Jesus Christ. Okay, but you you get my point, right? <laughs> it, it's only with artists that people kind of feel like that's okay because that's kind of a prejudiced thing, like, oh, art really isn't hard work. But come on, if you are an artist, you know how much hard work it is. Uh, so don't do that. And the last thing is that it's something that might be a little bit impossible, but you should always try to do is... Um, try to get uh, mostly jobs about things that you enjoy doing. Uh, if you don't do that, there's a very high risk that you will do things kind of half-heartedly, you know? So if you like drawing characters, uh, try, try to get mostly jobs, uh, of, uh, character design jobs or character illustrations, because uh, you, you will obviously be better at what you do that doesn't mean that you should stop studying and, and stop pushing yourself to do different things because you definitely should but if you enjoy doing what you do you will obviously do it better and be more successful and people will pay you more for it <laughs> okay so i hope those tips were useful and <clears throat> please if you like my videos subscribe to my channel comment below uh, give it a thumbs up uh, all that good stuff and uh, stay tuned for the last part of the series where i talk about the psychological side of being a freelance artist okay so thank you for watching